So, now that Chris Chan is medicated and no longer a complete spaz, King Lolcal, um, someone has nominated a successor. I got to this anonymous letter, or the anonymous package. It was postage not paid. Like, I had to pay the postage on it to receive it. And it the post office was like, well, where was it sent from? And it had my address as the return address with me as the sendee, which is not true. And it, in it, it had this burned piece of paper, which I, I feel like I'm going to get serial raped here. It says, the stars are aligned. A new host is chosen. Hail unto thee. Nick Chan Rakatichu. And then with that came this. And this was so weird because this came before the mention of Sonic in the trademark dispute uh, that we were talking about last night. A Sonichu <laughs> medallion <laughs> has um, been passed to me. I don't know where this came from. I don't know what it means it other on. than what it means. But that is... um. That happened. That happened. It cost me two dollars <laughs> to pay the postage on it, dude. If if you need more guns, just let me know. I'll 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 some. Right. <laughs> this is friendly, I think. This is friendly. Come Don't on. put it on. Come on. Don't put it on. Sonic he has it on. Lives. He lives in you. He says it. He even he the guy sent him a curse medallion made of curse play doh. Model magic, and then sent him a Necronomicon enchantment. And Rakeda instinctively puts on the medallion and reads the enchantment aloud in public so that everyone may witness it. He even has gathered witnesses so that the deed may be may be seen and recorded into history. This is not good chat. Um, okay, so how do I want to handle this? Let me see what I got here. Rakeda and Dick both desperately want my attention. They have acknowledged me as their e-daddy, and they seek my validation and, and uh, approval or disapproval in this instance. And so I will be very selective in what I respond to regarding them, because uh, I know that they will simply act up any time they want e-daddy's attention. And uh, that's not good entertainment, and it encourages them to be boring. So... I have to be very careful. Um, I will start with this. Rakeda, whenever you see the kitchen in the background, that's like a local stream, and you're almost guaranteed that he's about to say some retarded ass shit. So in this instance, Rakeda makes the statement that all men are gay. I have a theory. It's gonna it's gonna make some gay men very mad, but I have a theory that men uh, are becoming closetedly gay. Men as a group. Not me, obviously. I'm I'm super heterosexual. Only like women. But a bunch of men are are closetedly gay. And uh I've determined this because it's simple. If you've been online like I've been around a bit, I'm I'm an observant man. Not an observant Jew, that's different. I'm an observant man. And um I've talked a lot about relationships, male attraction, female attraction, stuff like that. You guys have heard this. People get pissed off when I do. They're like, you don't know anything. You're a fag. I'm like, yeah, well, true, but listen to me for a second. I'm right. And um, I've talked about short shorts, very important. I've talked about uh, quite a bit. And the one thing I've noticed about men, commenting about how men should uh, present themselves as attractive, is... Um, Men don't listen to women about being attractive. In fact, men predominantly listen to men about how to be attractive, which tells me that men are all gay and they really want to know how to get a dick in their butt. That's just facts. This is just kind of true. And it's weird to admit that most men um, want to hear what men think are attractive. And, and men will justify their unseemly and ungainly looks uh, by saying, hey, bro, nice giant beard. Like the big mountain man beard. I know there's like five women out there who will lie and be like, no, those, those lumberjack beards are really great. I love the way that it feels when he's uh, going down on me and I can feel his beard on my kneecaps. 
I, I, I definitely like that. That's cool. But what it actually is, is a giant excuse to be a big, fat, burly guy with a big beard, and the beard distracts from how fat and ugly you are. I got it. Look, look, no, I, I love that. I, I love those beards. But that's because I'm a guy. Like, guys like those beards. Women don't like those beards. And I, I know, again, I know some women are going to lie. Women are chameleons. We know this. There's several other instances where women will lie about what's attractive on men. Men don't lie. Men will tell you what men find attractive. And those giant beards and sunglasses and bald heads are definitely one of those things that other men find attractive. Uh, but that's what women lie about. And there's, again, the long shorts. Guys are like, no, long shorts are great. No, I wouldn't want short shorts. That'd be gay. And other guys are like, yeah, long shorts are super hot. Short shorts, ugly as hell. And you're like, yeah, super gay to like short shorts, right? And the, the guys are like, yeah, super gay. Hotness is the long shorts. And they're like, yeah, that's why I'm going to wear, wear long shorts. Boom. I'm telling you, dudes are gay. I don't know what to say. So I don't know what to make of that. If he just, if he wants to come out as gay, like just come out, I don't even know what he's waiting for. Cause he, he copes that he doesn't do any of the things that the forum has accused him of doing, but then he, he tries to like say that he doesn't care by saying, well, it all sounds really fun anyways. So just say it. I don't understand. Like, what's the point of denying that you do wife swapping or that you go to hedonism or whatever, like during the, the racial mixing week, like at, at this point, what difference does it make? If you want to say that you're gay or hetero flex or whatever, just do it. Does anyone care? I've had, I've heard the theory that maybe he's just trying to warm people up to this before he comes out. He's just going to be like, He's testing the waters. He's hinting like, haha, all men are kind of gay. Haha. And he's just trying to see like what his existing audience thinks before he comes out and be like, yeah. So anyways, me and my wife, we swap. And I also get fucked in the ass by black men. And like, is that, what, is that what he's leading up to? He's just trying to like do the, the frog boiling thing. And then in a year from now, when it gets to that point where he can comfortably talk about his experiences at hedonism three, he's just like, dude, I've been talking about how all guys are kind of gay since like, this time last year man i've never been hiding this i've just been talking about it for you know for years at this point like is that the gambit is he like in is he capable of the kind of like foretelling that that would require like the planning that that would take to get to that point because uh that's that's more that's more planning than than i would expect from him at this point in time considering the holes in his head but uh yeah that's a weird clip the other one is this. I like this clip too. I'll play this. Is that why I like the bottle? By the way, he's open mouth chewing and talking. That's how you know he does not give a single fuck about his audience. Anybody who eats on on mic and like is just talking into the mic and that's not like the purpose of the thing. Um they just don't give a fuck. There is one clip of me eating on mic, and that is when I am like eating a burger. Because the it was the middle of Drop Kiwi Farms and I was literally working every second. And the one time that I got to myself to eat a burger, I I did some Gumroad content for it. It's the only clip of me eating. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like he really just doesn't give a fuck if he's just going to casually do this. Real quick. Like there's, I know there's a clip video of me like licking the bottle a million times in the dick stream. My oh, yes, rage. Oh, well, uh, the dick stream. That's a, that's his that's his code name for the seven hour stream where he's completely fucked up and calling himself a white bread ass nigga and making fun of it, Eric July and shit. I sure. I guess Dick was technically on that stream. Trust everyone. Yeah, that's that's everyone everyone's, everyone's a fag. I'd say. No one quotes. I don't want to will. Yes, yes, all doing I'll replay those clips as well. Or whatever. And you've heard and people don't seem to realize this because no. Uh, apparently, uh, unjustified. Yeah. Oh, alcoholic with the bottle. I've been licking the bottle for six years, I think. Um, when you pour whiskey into a glass and you set it down, a little drip goes down the bottle. When you pay. Two hundred dollars for a bottle of whiskey, and a drip goes down. And you're like, that's like eighty six cents. Lick it. Why would you? And as that the eighty six cents thing is a joke. But when you set the whiskey down, the bottle down, and you let the the drip go and form a circle, 
it forms a literal circle stain on whatever surface it's on. Like, why do you lick the bottle? It's like, well, it's either lick the bottle or put a fucking Kleenex up to it or whatever. Just don't make a mess. That, that's the whole thing. Don't make a mess. Just drink water then. If I drank water, do you think I would have fucking torched Eric July tonight? Think about it. That's so weird. Um, I, I, I don't have a huge amount of experience drinking, but I have drank alcohol before. I think what it is, I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't ever remember like spilling alcohol like that. I kind of wonder if maybe the reason why there's not like a little dribble when I drink is that like... I um I put the cap back on it. Does he not like recap it? What the fuck is he doing? How is he accomplishing this? I really don't understand. Why is his nose red? Because he's fucking drunk. He's sloshed in this. I just don't understand. Like the the like it's like a compulsion. Every time, like it, he he does it every time he pours a drink. He like licks the bottle. I'm really trying to to think about the times that I've poured alcohol, and I don't think I've ever had the fucking rundown. I've never had the compulsion to 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 lick it either. It's usually you pour it out and then you recap it, and it's fine, and it doesn't dribble anywhere. I don't know, man. Um, why does Nick still stream? Because it makes him money. That's it. Uh, the next thing is it requires some explanation. Um, Russell Greer has sued me for like 8 million different things a couple of years ago. Literally in 2019, he DMCA'd me, and then I think he filed in 2020. Um, of all those charges or torts that he filed against me, they were all rejected. He then appealed to, this, uh, to the appellate court of the, eighth, the 10th district, I want to say. It's right in front of me. The United States District Court for the District of Utah. I think that's the tenth, the tenth circuit. Yes, the tenth circuit court. Um. And when he did this, a group called the Digital Justice Organization, which is a copyright protection group, so like a digital media rights group, one of the worst kinds of people on the fucking planet. People who do nothing. Uh, what they do, I believe they are funded by international media rights organizations. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. The kinds of people who defend copyright, however strongly as possible, the worst people on the planet pour money into organizations like this. And what they do is they look for every single um, copyright dispute in the entire country, and they will represent it pro bono. Uh, to try and score wins, or they think they can score wins um, in defense of copyright. Because uh, once uh, court precedence is settled, um, then it seeps into the entire country, and it affects all copyright cases moving forward, uh, especially in that jurisdiction, but the, it can leak out to other, other districts as well. So um, my attorney was uh, Gregory Scordis, who uh, was the attorney for... Uh, Taylor Swift when Russell Greer sued uh, Tay Tay and I picked that just uh, picked him specifically for the meme and uh, he won the lawsuit it was dead in the water it appealed and then the uh, the digital justice uh, organization represented Greer pro bono for the sake of trying to win copyright law uh, and they managed to get the very specifically on the contributory copyright infringement they managed to get that overturned the the decision that that was to be thrown out so now the uh the case is back alive which means that i have to defend against it um i have very 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 fair arrangements with my attorney and i have an all hands on deck for multiple attorneys on how to proceed forward and i have a very strong idea of how i want to respond 
Uh, it is an unfortunate circumstance. I 100% believe that it's still being used fairly. Um, at the first hurdle, though, with this, it couldn't be dismissed in the easiest way possible. Um, but obviously, there's still routes forward. Uh, Rakeda, who is someone who does not like rear, who does not like DMCA abuse, uh, who is supposedly a free speech uh, libertarian type, uh, who really shouldn't be, in the, if he's libertarian, he really shouldn't be pro-infinite copyright either, uh, saw this, heard the news, and literally had to interrupt his stream without even reading it, without going over it, without understanding the uh, implications of it, without really thinking it over, just heard the term that just fi uh, heard that I would probably have to pay money for an attorney moving forward in this case to blow it. And I want to show you this because I want you to look too, if you're, if you're watching, I want you to watch the small emotions in his face the little things that he does, how much he hits the bottle, just like savor the small things about his behavior. Cause there's so much body language and invisible, uh, uh, like this, this, this something, um, like there's a lack of harmony between how, what he's saying and how he's feeling. And he's trying to be very careful in how he talks about this. So it's not too obvious how he feels, but it's very, very evident in the body language. Uh, this is four minutes long. I will subject you to all of it because I want you to really see that underneath the ha ha silly facade, this is the real Nick Riccata. Uh This is how he actually is. Um, he is petty, vindictive, uh, he has no sense of right and wrong. He is a person driven entirely by immediate uh, instant gratification. That's all he is. Russell Greer. In a case that I had stopped following. Has won his appeal against Kiwi Farms for contributory copyright infringement, and now the case moves on. Oh, Kiwi Bros. I don't, I don't feel so good, Kiwi Bros. <laughs> Look, I don't want Russell Greer to win this case in concept. I really don't want that to happen. And I do not think that contributory copyright infringement based on the facts I saw is a thing. I think they may ultimately win the case, but you know, <laughs> Oh shit. Well, Sorry, Josh. Sorry, Gator. <laughs> Having a little trouble mustering the sympathy for you, you faggot. Hope you don't have to go to uh, Discovery on that one. That might be unfortunate. Hmm. Look at that. Look at the face. Don't no do words. a screen a stream uh, screaming about it, Josh. Or e-bag for a crowdfund for your lawsuit or anything like that. That'd be a shame, right? If you did all that. There's a there's an unjust lawsuit against you and uh and someone decided to have a weird random personal animus with you for no fucking reason.
That's a lot of alcohol. That suck. That's a lot of alcohol really fast. So uh, there will be an update apparently on that. I stopped following that case. I thought it was dead in the fucking water. thought it was dead in the fucking water. Kiwi Farms has been taking L's like crazy lately. Shit. That's the most embarrassing opponent to lose to possible. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, all right. I, I don't know anything about it other than they reversed and remanded saying that uh, Russell Greer has brought plausible claims of contributory copyright infringement against the Kiwi Farms. And uh, so now it will go back to the district court uh, to proceed with the case. We'll have to look into the arguments presented and uh, what the actual, um, I guess, what the order says. It's amazing. The Josh is a really good lawyer, though. I mean, he usually knows what he's talking about, so that's cool. I guess he just didn't win this one. Riley still has that felony charge, though. So he's right on that. Right? Right, Josh? Riley's got that felony charge? Definitely got a felony for showing up the Riververse. Does he have it? Have you seen a charging document or have you seen an incident report? Have you seen a warrant request? I haven't seen one. Seems like somebody would have that. Oh, God, that's funny. Well, I don't know. It is fair to criticize my legal takes because we're both non-practicing lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> we have about as much courtroom experience. In fact, if I do get taken a deposition, I think that I will have more courtroom experience than, than Nick. Um, I don't know. I do have practicing attorneys who are looking into it more than one. Uh, and again, very, very reasonable people who are doing their best to try and help me within uh, the limitations that I have. And I'm very thankful for uh, the sort of pantheon of really incredible people that uh, I have, uh, who have volunteered their time and services to assist me and, and the shit that I have to go through. Um, if I do I have to sell shit I, to, to pay bills and stuff, because even if an attorney were working pro bono, there, there are still fees involved in depositions. Like you have to pay people for their time when you depose them. Uh, it's obviously it's not ideal um, to have to go back to square one and fight it over again. But um, the fact is, is that the song that is alleged to be, there's two alleged contributory copyright infringements. One of them is a Google Drive link, which case law indicates a Google Drive link cannot be copyright infringement where the link is placed because it doesn't make any sense. The file is literally not on my server. I do not have a, a I do not host it. The other one is a song, and I believe very strongly that among other things, the song is necessarily archived in a way that does not infringe upon the original market so that people may ne uh, criticize the song in a way that they can't anywhere else. Because how do you criticize Russell Greer when he's moderating his comments and so on and so forth? There's reasons for it. Um, so I'm pr pretty confident. I would, I would give it a, about an eight out of 10 in confidence. Um, I am way, way more confident that I can defend the fair use of and the non-infringement of the torts of Russell Greer's case, um, then I am in Ricada not being found guilty of defamation uh, pro se against Montegraff for saying that he always liked sucking little baby dicks. That is very much on the nose. It is not a joke. It cannot be interpreted as a joke. There is no way to interpret that other than a public accusation that one man who has never been convicted of any child sex offenses uh, is a child sex offender in the literal definition of that term. Um, and on one hand, it's very reasonable to, you know, for a, a host to say, no, I'm, I'm not going to censor archives of clips that could be deleted off the internet. It is very unreasonable to randomly go out and accuse people of being pedophiles. However, I guess he just assumes that when people like Vito go out and they say uh, that they're a pedophile and that they jerk off to cuties, and so on and so forth, and they have old blogs of them reviewing Shotokan and shit, then you can't, you can't make the inferences about that. When someone sings a song titled, I am a pedophile, you can't make inferences about that. And it's just, 
It's just so disingenuous. And it's just, it's really, it's almost kind of shocking. Like when I see Riketa so transparently like malicious like that, it makes me wonder, was, was he always like that? Cause I, in my head, he was at one point a really nice guy who really did care about certain things and had principled opinions. Uh, but then he became an alcoholic and there are holes in his brain. And now I am looking at this thinking like, wow, is this, has this guy always been like this? Is this, is this like the real Ricada? And the only thing that's changed is that now because of the holes in his head, he lacks the intellectual capacity to maintain his facade. And now all that I'm seeing is like the real person with sans any facade. And he's just, the, the difference is not that his personality has changed because there's a hole boring through his prefrontal cortex. The only thing that's changed is that he's no longer able to pretend to be anything else. It's really hard for me to, to distinguish. And I don't know. I just, I am utterly disgusted by him. Um, and the thing is, is, is I even told him early on, like, that I disagreed with him calling Montegraff a, a child sex offender. And I really, I, I told him, I think I told him directly that he should have um, found a way out of the case. And again, Riketa in his thing, what he just said is that he doesn't even think that it will proceed and I'll have to pay, you know, whatever the fuck for uh, statutory damages. He thinks it will get thrown out. But what he finds really funny is that he knows somebody with lesser means than him is going to have to pay to go all the way up to discovery or, you know, which is $30,000 up to $75,000 for a trial and so on. It's, it's more expensive. Um, it's a bigger pain in the ass. It's more time. This case has literally been going on for two years now, maybe even three. I want to say that it was filed around this time in 2020. Uh, so this has been going on for three years now. And of course it's going to go to appeals. It's going to take more months and then it's going to go back to, if it, appeals aren't accepted this time around, it'll go back to, you know, square one. And then it's all over again, another three years because Russell Greer sang a song about uh, Instagram model that people want to make fun of and couldn't do so except on the Kiwi farms. And he tried to censor that and it didn't work out. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's a mess. And it's one of the, one of the biggest pains in the asses. I don't, I want to phrase it like this. Um, even comp completely frivolous bullshit lawsuits filed pro se in form of Paul Paris by a literal insane person. Um, you could right now, you could go online, you could find some templates for whatever tort you wanted to file. You could find somebody and then file a lawsuit against them in a courtroom. You could sign it, pay a hundred dollars for the filing fee. And then that person is fucked. You will probably like literally just pick any random civil, civil tort in your state and then pick it out of your phone book, any name from your entire state and file that random bullshit lawsuit with unspecific details. And if you manage to pass the sniff test and get that lawsuit filed in, um, with absolute bullshit facts, there is a likelihood that you will bankrupt that person. All it takes is one lawsuit, one bullshit lawsuit, and almost everybody in the United States of America is bankrupt. They have no way of defending it. You're not entitled to a public defender in civil cases. There's very rarely legal help for people who are being taken advantage of by the system. Um, in my case, the EFF is aware of what's going on. They're aware of the appeal and they do not care. If they say you're completely on your own. And other nonprofit organizations like that do not want to touch us because uh, in the appellate court, like, listen, I'll show you this. If I go through this. Um, this is a quote from, by the way, this, oh, I can't. I want to say something about the judge, but I'll hold my tongue. I'll be nice. The judge did decide to say this in um, their, their opinion. Many of Kiwi Farms' targets are physically or mentally disabled, uh, and Mr. Greer himself suffers a form of facial paralysis. Kiwi Farms users allegedly stalk and harass these other individuals. According to Mr. Greer's complaint and the request for a pre preliminary injunction, Mr. Moon and Kiwi Farms users have been implicated in three suicides, a school shooting in New Mexico, a clash with New Zealand authorities over information about terrorist attacks in mosques and churches. Utter 
bullshit. But at this stage in the um in the in the the proceedings, anything that the plaintiff files is presumed to be true. And of course, the judge is going to take this and reiterate it. And then that information is in public record as like a court document. And then when people report on this, um, on like Bloomberg News and shit, they quote this as true. They say, well, a judge is saying that they withheld information from New Zealand police. So therefore, uh, they were helping a terrorist. And they get to just say that now forever because uh, the court is, is participating in this. Uh, so it's really frustrating. And there's a lot of injustice, but because at this point, like the Kiwi Farms is undefamable. You can say literally anything about us, and I have no recourse against it. And the organizations that you would hope would defend civil liberties um, are, are not interested in helping. They want something easier and more um, better for PR. Uh, so the the justice system for for little people in this in the United States is very dire. It's in a very sad place. Um Riketa knows that it's very dire. It's in a very sad place and he doesn't care. And he thinks it's funny actually. So keep that in mind. Um let's just do a little a little what they call in camera editing right now. Go back to this. But you know, <laughs> when Riketa asks you for money to help help his poor widow, poor widow defense case, to hire the nice warrior uh, from California to defend him from the Hecken Hecken uh, defamation case, remember this. This is what he thinks about people abusing the legal system. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! She, that's a white bread ass nigga if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh well, it does suck. Um, it really, it, it really shocks me, like how disappointing he continues to be, because it's gone from like, oh well, I expect better of him to like, oh that's. That's actually like really shitty behavior from like anybody. And you know, never bind somebody that you, you know, hold in high regard or trusted at some point. Like that's like shitty behavior just in general from people. Such is life. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.